Hey guys, it's Dan from Soilier and welcome back to our One Take Wednesday series. Today on episode 25, I'll be going over my duty belt. So this duty belt is what I would wear if I was in uniform, not in a specialized unit. unit. So this belt would be what I'd be wearing uh, for responding for calls for service. Uh, this is the belt I've had for quite some time. Uh, the original belt I had, uh, my department still issues like the old leather gear with the brass buckles. Uh, I had that for quite a long time until I made the, uh, the bicycle unit. The bicycle unit allowed me to switch over to a nylon belt, uh, and that's currently what I'm running. Uh, a lot of times for, for different departments that are still kind of stuck in the Stone Age, uh, they don't allow nylon belts unless you have like a doctor's note or, uh, or some specialized unit that allows you to have it. For my department in particular, it happens to be uh, like bicycle patrol or uh, you have a back problem or like canine uh, commercial vehicle, some other specialized units there. Uh, you know, again, you can you can try to show them all the benefits of having a lighter nylon belt or load bearing vest. But again, uh, you know, institutional inertia and whatnot stuff kind of takes a long time to change. But eventually, change does happen. So for the guys out there who are still fighting that fight, uh, I understand your uh, <laughs> I understand your struggle. But just make sure you uh, you keep up at it, keep showing them the data, so it's hard to uh, to deny. But let's dive right into this. This belt right here. I originally had like a Bianchi or whatever that, that brand's called belt. Uh, it, it's kind of garbage. I did upgrade my belt to a 511 belt. So the actual belt chassis right here is a 511 belt. Uh, I'm not sure exactly on what model number it is. So I will send, uh, I'll put a, a link in the description of what actual 511 belt it is. A uh, couple things I really liked about the, the belt is it's a, it's kind of the updated inner and outer two belt system, which we're all, we've all been grown to uh, get used to at this point. So the belt itself uh, does have hook Velcro on the outer belt, and then it does come with an inner belt, uh, and this is just a loop Velcro inner belt. So the inner belt is going to be a one and a half uh, width. Let's see if it says it. Sierra, Sierra Bravo color black. Uh, this is a 32, 34 size medium. So keep that waist small, guys. If you if you need bigger than this, uh, and you're not like huge full of muscles, you're probably fat. In which case, get to the gym. Uh, but realistically, this is a one and a half inch inner belt, so it will fit on all different types of pants. Uh, most police pants are at least a 1.5 uh, inch opening there. So inner belt, the inner belt itself is not something I would ever wear for anything other than concealed carry. I mean, this belt purely is just for the duty belt. Uh, but what is nice with the two belt system, if for whatever reason I was running my Segura belt or maybe I forgot this belt for some reason, even though it stays in the locker, uh, it will allow me to use any outer loop belt in conjunction with the belt, the, the outer belt. So I'll set that to the side. As far as uh, the one thing I did like about the this belt in particular is it has that like industrial grade uh, Velcro. So normal hook and loop, like what I have in my tourniquet holders and whatnot, that's like traditional Velcro. Uh, I don't know the model number because I'm not like a sewing nerd, kind of am, but not a sewing nerd. Uh, this is more of a directional belt. So uh, companies like uh, Lead Devil make a phenomenal belt uh, and they make two belt systems and whatnot with Cobra buckles and Molly and all that, but they use this Velcro also. It's a very stiff Velcro and it works really well uh, for certain directions, right? So this belt, all the weight of this belt is gonna be down, right, or up. So it does really well in holding uh, the weight of that belt. And it doesn't, it's not like sharp. It's just kind of, it has some rigidity to it. So if you guys know what I'm talking about, you'll understand uh, any of this adhesive Velcro. So I'll go over it in a minute, but any of the adhesive Velcro on the back of these pouches is made of the same type of Velcro. It's like this industrial hard plastic Velcro. So not your traditional like hook and loop. Uh, so anyway, so the belt itself, the belt is a 1.75 inch uh, width, right? So you can see there, uh, what, what's nice about that is we run Safari Land holsters. You can actually buy the Safari Land, uh, I'm gonna, is it the UL, URL or U, whatever, this, the drop right here. They come in uh, mid length, which is what most holsters ship with. They come with high and they come with lows. Um, but the, they make a 1.75 now, so it fits perfect, right? So the one thing I don't like is having any sort of rock or play in my holster. And before they came out with the 1.75, I was constantly having the, they, they made like a little adapter that hooked in there, but you'll see a lot of guys, like the guys that know what they're, they're doing, they, they would run like zip ties and whatnot on there or try to fill in that gap. Uh, I took some rubber hosing and cut it, the black rubber hosing cut it and I would use that as a little spacer. That was, that was back when I got hired in like 2012. So since then, uh, innovation have come out with these holster companies and they make, uh, 
the ones there. So it's nice because a lot of the nylon belts you can get uh, aren't necessarily that width. So the 1.75 is ideal for this belt. And I'm just gonna start on one side and work my way over. So we'll start right here. The buckle on this belt is plastic, which again, like if this was a swap belt and I was doing any sort of like rigging or any sort of uh, like a lanyard system or anything like that, I would want a Cobra buckle and I'd want it to be weight. But for something like this, I just want to keep it light, right? You're wearing this for, for eight to 12 hours a day, right? If you're not working a double or anything like that. So you want, the, you know, the weight is going to be an issue after a while. So this has a nice plastic buckle, uh, which, which locks very well. But you'll notice when I close it here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the camera. I'll try to, this is difficult doing opposite because I'm not used to it. Hold on, I'll do it this way. Sorry about that. That's why. There we go. So it clips in there, the buckle itself. And again, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but there you are. So the buckle itself is very slim, so it doesn't take up a lot of space in the belt. So you're able to get all your, your equipment and your, your bat belt, all of them real close to together, right to that gig line. Uh, I like that because otherwise what you have to do is you kind of have to move the buckle around on your body. So you're able to get that mission essential equipment right up front. But for this belt, you don't need to. And then in order to unlock it, it's a two part system. So you have to push in on the middle and then slide up. So I just liked how that buckle worked. I liked how it was slim and it just worked for me. So, you know what, maybe it'll be easier to work on it close. There we go, I'll try that. All right, so in the middle here, and I'm sorry for the guys who are listening on headphones right now, because it's right next to the mic. It's probably making a ton of noise, but we'll start off here. So these are what, the Bianchi or something. These are just a standard nylon handcuff case. I run this essentially right at my 12 o'clock or just to the right side of it. Uh, these would be my primary cuffs when I would ever go to handcuff someone. So you put their hands behind your back. You, you know, for me, I would hold, try to hold on to their fingers or try to hold on to their hand as best I could. And I had them right in the front. And I like that because in the event that, right, it's like, just like your reloads, right? It was very quick and it's very, uh, you know, streamlined right in the front of you. And the reason I liked it right in the front is because if that person started to resist, my hand's right here, right? So it's, my hands are on them, my hands are off, and then my hands are back on them handcuffing. I never liked the dudes who had to then bring their shoulder and bring their arm all the way back because now I'm defending myself with one hand. So for the defensive tactics guys out there or due to jujitsu or any sort of combat uh, sport, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about there. We're like, I want to have my hands close to me, right? The bass rooting, like keep your hands, you know, like here or here, you know, he did all sorts of stuff like that, but it's true. Like having your hands in front of you is gonna be ideal for a fighting situation. Uh, having your hands behind you, well, you're kind of behind the, you know, you're already behind the reactionary curve. So now obviously where your hand is in relation to that is gonna affect you. Uh, there's some things on here which I have to have just for patrol and just for our general orders and whatnot. Uh, and then there's a couple of things I've added that I do take off on and off depending on what I'm doing. Uh, so next here is just gonna be a spray. So I had to have some sort of level two uh, use of force thing. So right here is just a nylon spray with uh, some OC in there. Uh, and then you move into the side here. So you'll notice right now, this is a, a Safari Land RDS 6360. Don't quote me on that. What is it? 6360, right? So there's a red dot holster. It's for a Glock 17 uh, with a TLR1 HL light on it. You'll notice here, I'm just going to pop it off so you can kind of see. So you'll notice it is on a QLS. Okay. Now I personally don't like QLS if you don't have to run one. The only reason that I have a QLS system right now is because this holster, uh, uh, basically I'm testing the red dot uh, handgun for my department. There's only me and a couple other guys testing them. Uh, I only have one holster for this. So instead of going out and buying another holster for this, just for the testing phase, uh, I was cheap and I put a QLS on it so I can switch it between this and my warrant belt. If you're not, if you don't have to run a QLS, I would not advise running a QLS. Uh, it, introduces another failure point both the fact that you know you got screws into little uh you know sockets there and then as well as the fact that besides it being plastic like it could fail in a, in a, a grappling situation right it's just one more thing that could fail um but i didn't want to have to buy two holsters because i'd also need uh, another negative cant plate uh the guys over at negative can uh, was it negative cants by uh theory police uh he hooked me up with these so i had these as with an earlier Gen 3s that had just come out. Um, so I have that, and again, that's just to reduce the cant on the on the holster, so I have a, a very nice draw with just a slight negative cant. It just helps with the speed of the draw. Uh, nub mod on the side there, and then an extra set of tools on the back side here. So if you guys are running any sort of Safari Land holsters, uh, I'd highly recommend taking some, some, I'll grab it right here, taking some Gorilla Tape, 
right? And essentially all you have to do is take the Allen wrench that comes with the holster and, and stick it right to the back of the, the, I forget what it's called, URL or whatever, the, the drop down plate. You put it right in the back here. Uh, the guys over at Core Performance hooked me up with one of their pads on the side here. And I'm like, I wasn't sure how I was gonna like this. Uh, I actually like it, like it quite a bit, right? So yes, it was provided to me for free, uh, but I wanted to test it out. I usually give honest feedback. I'm not, I'm not here to like simp on different brands and stuff. If something's doing, someone's doing something right, I, I'll you know say so. If they're doing something wrong, I'll call them out. Uh, again, my opinion doesn't really mean much, but uh, that being said, it is super comfortable. So if you've ever done any sort of uh, defensive tactics or, you know, ground fighting with your duty belt on, you know, or even on the range, whenever you uh, like go prone fast, maybe you're doing a, like one of Will Petty's, a centrifuge, uh, you know, instructor course, like qual, you know, like getting down and dropping to your holster can suck, right? You can really get bruised hips and, and all, you know, all the things like that. And again, like, is it the end of the world? No, it's not the end of the world, right? But if I can provide a little bit more comfort, it's ideal. So I'll tell you what, having this rest on your side helps keep that holster upright at like, you know, so it's straight, so it's not kind of bowing in based on your body. Uh, and I really like it. So I, I didn't think I would like it that much and I actually do really like it. Um, so again, keep the tool behind there. Uh, don't you, in my opinion, don't use QLS if you don't need to. Uh, they make a bunch of the adjustable drop downs now so you can adjust the cant also if you don't want to use a negative cant plate or there's other things like the negative cant plate that you can utilize to uh, to fix that cant. All right, so one thing I do want to point out here also is you'll notice, so this is a two belt system, meaning I have the inner belt, which is going to be loop and the outer belt, which is going to be hook. They do attach to each other, right? And they're, they're solid. Like I said, that Velcro is pretty solid. Do I need keepers, All right? So... I'll tell you my philosophy on it. Uh, my philosophy is this. You don't need keepers, right? Especially for how well this stuff works, you don't need keepers, all right? So like my SWAT belt, I use a Ronin Tactics belt. Same thing, a two belt system, inner and outer. I don't run keepers on that. The reason I don't run keepers on that is because in the event of me getting in a fight or a grappling situation, some sort of combative situation, hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, or maybe I'm, you know, someone's not getting off my wall, I pin them up against the wall, realistically i only have to fight that person for like 10 to 15 seconds right i have to fight that person or hold that person long enough that my team can finish clearing that room deal with what needs to be dealt with in that room and then come back to me and now you have me and three of my boys uh you know dealing with you whatever that situation is right on road patrol on the street right uh on a domestic in a house or you know on a traffic stop in the middle of a country road like no one's coming to save you right they are but it's going to be possibly 10, 15 minutes that you're gonna be grappling with someone. So you'll notice here, I keep a, have a keeper on both sides of where my holster is. And then I've got two other ones. So I used to run five. Now with this system, I run four. And the reason is, is the last thing I wanna do in a fight where I'm possibly fighting for my life uh, in a, some sort of grappling situation is have my belt either shift on me or completely like pull down, right? And again, you can't dictate when that's gonna happen. Uh, utilize as best officer safety as you can, but it could happen. And the fight's gonna be much longer on a patrol setting than in like a SWAT or a team setting. So that's why I don't wear them for those. And that's why I wear them for this. Is it redundant? Yep, but I'm kind of for that redundancy in the event that it's something this critical. Uh, moving back, so I, I mentioned a couple of other videos. I used to wear three cuffs and I got away from that just based on the weight. Uh, I don't, I'm, again, I'm a 34 waist and I'm probably really like a 33 waist without a gun in the appendix carry. But I was running three for a while. Uh, both like the small on my back, like where your mom's tattoo is, and then one in the front. Uh, what I found was that the third one wasn't really necessary. If I needed a third pair of cuffs when I secured someone in my car, I would just grab an extra one from my duty bag. So I did carry an extra set of uh, handcuffs in that duty bag. Uh, so another set of cuffs that's right behind there, right behind the gun, I have nothing that's gonna interfere with that draw or with that grip. So you'll notice I have a keeper and then I have my little key holder. So I'll go over this. The reason I took this off just because it was making a lot of noise. Um, so what I made for the key holder, it's just two rings. Let's see if I can show you. Hold on. It's just two rings. There you go. With a little piece of nylon there. This is a three quarter inch piece of nylon that's about two inches long. Uh, I made this one, but you can buy them at like uh, Home Depot or anything like that. The reason why I have the length is I clip that behind my, my gun belt or my, behind my uh, holster. And I tuck this part into my pocket. And the reason I did that is you see a lot of guys have them on the front or you have them on the back. Uh, 
and they're dangling the whole time. So you get in a foot chase or you, you're trying to sneak up on someone in the middle of the night or you're trying to you know go around a building on an alarm. Right? I worked night, nights for five years and that would have given you away. So kind of an FTO tip that I always tell all my recruits is like, if you're, I give them like the jump test. So beginning of the shift, they'll, uh, I'll have them jump up and down. You're like, what the hell are you doing, right? And you're just jumping down. The only thing you should hear is your, is your boots touching the ground, right? Nothing on your, on your person should make noise. Uh, you wanna be silent. So by hooking that behind here and then tucking it in my pocket, it wouldn't make any noise. Uh, and all I have in here is essentially we've got two of the Ford keys that uh, one were for the older model, one was for the newer model. So you didn't lock yourself out. You could keep your car running a fob to uh, our fire halls. And then this was a zone key, which was like a backup key. If for whatever reason, the RFID codes to get in the, the building didn't work, you have a manual key. Uh, handcuff key, I would keep on uh, in my shirt pocket, but you could always keep a backup one here. That, that was a good option as well. A lot of people did that. I used to for a while and then I, I've never used it. So I'm like, I don't need it. Um, so that's it. So I keep my gun so that nothing can kind of shift over and get in the way of uh, establishing a good grip. So moving back, now it's hard to see here, but essentially the belt here on the back, and it's hard to see, I think you can see it there. Uh, it, there's nothing on there. So the small of my back right behind me, I keep completely empty. And the reason I do that, uh, again, for ground fighting. So if anyone has ever dealt with uh, having stuff with a small of your back and lifting your hips up, it makes it much more difficult to, uh, you know, to shrimp or do anything like that. The other reason is because most of the time, you're, right, you're not fighting, you're, luckily, you're not doing any of that, you're sitting in a car. So you don't want to have any of that added pressure on your back. Uh, over the years, you're going to have some back problems with that. Same goes for, uh, for carrying a wallet, guys, right? Like, I highly recommend you carry, like, just a very basic, minimal, uh, uh, wallet, you know, there's a bunch of companies that make them now and essentially just have your, you know, your credit cards, maybe a little bit of cash, your ID to scan in and stuff. And that's it. Uh, and don't keep it in your back pocket. I would keep it. I recommend keeping it like your front pockets. Uh, try not to keep anything in your pockets. The only thing I had in my back left pocket was a pair of gloves that uh, were very, very slim. So some of these dudes are rocking like a badge wallet and they're like the trifold and they've got like all the pictures of the girlfriends. It's like, yeah, that's cool. Except when you sit on that for eight hours a day, you're going to have back problems. So if you're a new cop out there, I highly recommend don't keep anything in your back pockets. Don't keep anything on the small of your back on your belt. Moving around and maybe I'm dating myself at this point. It's hard to say. Um, what I have here, <laughs> see if, if you know what this is, go ahead and uh, throw it in the comment section, right? But I'll, I'll tell you here in a minute, but basically that's a, another keeper. So that's a third keeper I have around my body, but it's a mag light holder or a, a full size uh, light holder. So well, like I said, in one of my other videos, I still, I still highly recommend keeping a full size flashlight. Uh, I have a stream light one. That's the two inch diameter. It looks just like the old mag lights, but it's super bright, uh, rechargeable. And then, uh, you know, you can slide it in at the end of your shift and I've never had any issues with it. Still has a decent amount of weight to it. So you could pop, you know, probably give a good whack with it, uh, knock on doors, you know, whatever, whatever you guys want to do with it. But realistically, what I would utilize that for is uh, traffic stops, right? Traffic stops or potentially building searches or anything where you're not gonna have your gun out with your, with your tack light on uh, the whole time. Maybe, you know, it's a situation where you're not having to point your gun at it, but you're having to point a flashlight at it. Uh, the other thing I liked is I'd have my gun in my holster with a flashlight on it. I have another light here, which I'll go over in a second. And then on traffic stops, I would put that under my arm allowed me to have both my hands free. And in the event that I dropped that flashlight, I then had my small handheld one I could use or obviously my weapon mounted if uh, the situation called for it. So highly recommend uh, if you have a flashlight, being able to also stow it, which is what this little loop is for. All right, moving around to the other side here. Now you guys are gonna be mad. I don't remember the name of the company. Uh, so what I have here is a Streamlight Stryon HL. Uh, I bought this, this light's probably dated now. Uh, I'll, I'll give you guys that. There's definitely brighter ones out here. I'll tell you the reasons why I like this one and why the reason I don't like some of the new ones. I'm sure there's some out there that are good. If, there, if you have one in particular that you like, please uh, throw it in the comments. I'll be happy to check it out. So this Streamlight's dry on. I have the little plastic adapter here, but I'll tell you, tell you the reasons I like this light. I like it because it is rechargeable, so you're not going through a ton of CR123s. Uh, I know some mod lights and other things like that come out now that have that, that rechargeable battery, but I like the fact that this one was rechargeable. Uh, you'll notice the, the back, let's see if I can show you here. The back uh, button there is, is uh, not recessed, that's not the right word, but it is coming out. And the reason I like that is you're able to activate it for like a Surefire Rogers technique. So I can activate this flashlight with my gun in my hand, 
by utilizing that ring and then pushing out and pushing my palm on it. What I didn't like, I bought a mod light, had a bunch of negative things to say about them. I'm not gonna crush them too much, but their customer service was pretty disappointing. Um, I bought a mod light, was not happy with it, because again, you can't really do that with a mod light, at least the one I had. A um, few other things I didn't like about it, went to return it, they wouldn't let me return it, but uh, that's a different story. So uh, when I pick a flashlight, I pick one that's relatively de you know, decent size, not too small, not too big, has some sort of ring, or even if I put the rope ring around it, and then I like having that, that tail cap that's pushed out so I can activate it. Uh, the Kydex holster here, uh, <clears throat> this was just on, uh, I just Googled you know, uh, Kydex holsters for it, found one, because again, with that ring on it, you can't put it in one of the, uh, like those leather pouches. The other reason why I didn't like the leather pouch is a lot of guys will run it with their flashlight up, so now they have to pop it, grab it, and then change their grip. With this flashlight, I can draw it, right from here and I already have the grip that I would need in the event of a gunfight. Now again, my, my, my handgun has a flashlight. I'm lucky enough to have an apartment that has a flashlight on it. So if it was a situation where I had no light and then I was going to light, I would utilize this. But in a situation where, you know, there's a lot plenty of them, right? As you guys know, when you go to draw your flashlight, I'll, I'll grab it like this. And then if it becomes a gun day, then I can draw and punch out and, and you know, do whatever you need to do, right? Uh, the one thing I'll say, and I'll, I'll take this apart real quick again, is, actually I'll do it at the end, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, so that's the flashlight right there. As far as the radio pouch, so this is a new one, I actually have not even utilized this yet. I've been in the specialized unit long enough that I haven't utilized this yet, but uh, we switched from Motorola's. For the Motorola radio holders, I had a little, the little metal box that the radio would just slide in, and I like that uh, quite a bit. I didn't like the old, we used to have an old one like this that would move around and it sat really low. This one sits a little higher, so it might be all right. Uh, we sent switch to Harris, so I threw this one on here, but again, I have no experience right now wearing it other than I put it on the belt, so I have it if the, in the event that I need to go uh, you know, wear a uniform. So these two things right here, all right, so I have my uh, Monadnock, uh, you know, baton, right? It's just a folding baton with a power safety tip, right? You're talking, you know, in the academy, they kind of ingrain that in you. So uh, I've utilized this probably like three or four times and not a single time was for actually hitting anyone or doing any sort of strikes with it. I've utilized it once before with a, we had a pretty strong guy with his arms inside. We weren't able to get it, did the old slide it through, bring his arm back and it worked perfect. Uh, another couple times I've used it to assist me in raking out uh, glass on a window. Uh, once was to check on a elderly person and then I believe like two times were either vehicle stuff or we were just smashing it out for uh, you know a person inside who wasn't complying and that sort of thing but they're kind of useless I'm, I'm not a huge fan of them uh, they're a lot of weight and <clears throat> realistically in my opinion if you're hitting someone with it like there's a lot of things you haven't done at that point I would much rather rely on uh, kind of my personal skills than than that tool so without beating it up too much. I have to have it on me. Uh, it's part of our general orders, so there it is. Uh, and then lastly, for, uh, for optional gear I have right here is uh, AR mag, right? So this is just a Blade Tech M4 mag. Uh, I, was, I, ran, I started putting this on my belt relatively towards the end of my patrol, uh, my time on patrol. And the reason was is there was certain situations we were doing where we, we weren't wearing plate carriers, but we had a rifle on us. So when I had my rifle on me, um, I wanted to have an extra magazine, right? Even if it's not like the, the firefight, you know, uh, bank robber or anything like that, it allowed me to clear a malfunction and insert a new magazine, which, you know, any semi-automatic gun, like having an extra magazine on you is pretty important. So that's why I had that on there. But again, it's another Blade Tech, uh, uh, you know, clip on there so I can easily take it off the start of my shift, slide everything over, and that really clears up my backspace. Uh, Cause again, if I'm going in a, you know, an active shooter situation, I have time, ideally I'm grabbing plate carrier, throwing that on, clicking it on real quick, grabbing the rifle and I have my rifle all set up, ready to go. And, uh, and that's it. And then my, my plate carrier would have extra magazines on it. Uh, you'll notice the thing in blue right here. So this is my fourth keeper. I would keep around the belt. So two around the gun, one towards the back and then one up front here. Again, that's where all the weight is. Uh, the in blue right here, uh, I'm not releasing it yet. It's still a prototype. I've ran this prototype for a few years now. Uh, I just got to get get to the point of making it. But essentially, it's a latex glove pouch. All right. So my department until recently didn't have any pants with like the cargo pockets on the side. We ran 
like dress slacks. So like everyone had like women's dress slacks. And that's what you wore for patrol. Um, so there's no good way of carrying gloves. A lot of guys would carry them the small on the back, but again, even just a little bit of uh, that glove pouch with uh, you know two sets of gloves was enough for me to be uncomfortable after a while. So I moved them to the front, sewed up a pouch. <clears throat> again, I've been testing that for a while. Eventually they will come out. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of guys now just carry them in their cargo pockets. Highly recommend though guys having like at least two sets of latex gloves on you. All right, uh, in case one rips while you're putting it on. Uh, Having two on you is nice, or you do something, you think you're done, you take them off, and then something else starts up again, right? The bleeds, bleeding starts again, you have to transport someone, whatever the case. Uh, try not to get other people's fluids on you, obviously, and that's it. Uh, lastly, <clears throat> I've got two uh, Glock 17 mag holders. Uh, again, unfortunately, we have closed top magazine holders for patrol. Uh, again, it's a little bit of a, of a learning curve for me, so beginning, because because I, I'm so used to having open top now, uh, so at the beginning of my shift, you'll, you'll see me probably most of the time, I'll get dressed, I'll practice my holster, right? Make sure everything indexed properly on my, on my belt, and then I'll do a couple like phantom mag reloads just right into my hand, grabbing the magazine, inserting it in my hand, and then stowing it again. I'll do that a couple times just to kind of, you know, a little dry reps before my shift, if you will, just like dry firing, stuff like that. And it just helps me index those magazines faster in the event that I need them. Uh, I'm gonna open up the belt and go over two more things, and then we'll, we'll be done with this. So. One thing you'll see here is I do have a North American Rescue cat tourniquet uh, located on the back of my belt, all right? So uh, on the, in the YouTube description, if you go all the way down, they're probably one of my original videos. It's, it's probably several years old now. It's probably four or five years old now. I did a quick video on how to attach a tourniquet for basically free, for under like five cents, uh, to the back of your magazines, right? A lot of people luckily adapted this. So how this kind of went through my department was no one used to carry tourniquets on them. Uh, then people started to carry tourniquets on them, but had no real way of, of carrying them. There was a bunch of crappy pouches that companies released, which were not great. Uh, and a lot of guys wanted a way that, that to carry them kind of up front where they could actually grab them. So with a couple zip ties and a couple of your girlfriend's hair ties, <clears throat> you're able to uh, secure the tourniquet well on your belt, uh, enough that if you needed to grab it with both hands, you could grab it. Uh, in the event that it's stuck for whatever reason, you could just rip it and break those hair ties. And hair ties hold up better than rubber bands because of the UV protection, right? Rubber bands will dry out, uh, the sun beating on those and just, you know, kind of with age, they'll dry out and they'll snap, right? So last thing you wanna do is get in a fight or get in whatever situation uh, where, you know, you're you know fighting someone or anything like that and the tourniquet goes off, you know, rips off of you and then at some point later down that fight, you need a tourniquet. Well, now you don't have it because it's back 100 yards wherever you were fighting originally. So. Good to keep it on you. Again, you want to have the retention so that you don't lose it, uh, and then you have it when you need it, all right? And then the last thing I'm gonna go over here, guys. So again, this is a two belt system, right? Meaning hook and loop, they attach to each other with hook and loop. Uh, what you'll find here is almost every single spot on this belt where I have something covering the belt's hook and loop, right? So any anytime you slide something on here, it's gonna cover up the hook and loop. And if you never put any Velcro on the backside of it, your belt really wouldn't attach very well and you would definitely need the keepers. So what I try to do, and a lot of people do this nowadays, is nothing new, uh, is you go buy at Lowe's or Home Depot some of the adhesive Velcro and basically it's just industrial Velcro, Velcro it's two inches wide, uh, you peel it off, stick it on there, and now I've attached hook on everywhere that there wasn't already hook, right? So you can see here, the, the one on the, uh, the baton actually fell off. Uh, I, I finished tearing it off the rest of the way, but you can see here, guys, like, Every little piece, so there's the, the Blade Tech uh, you know, mount right there. I've got it on there, and some of this I've, I've just kind of stuffed in there. And it just allows you now to have a bunch of Velcro real estate so it attaches to that inner belt. All right, so I hope this kind of helped you uh, understand what, the way I set up my belt. Again, depending on what you're doing, you might not set up your belt this way. It's gonna be personal preference. Uh, if you weren't sure how to do a couple things, maybe uh, maybe this opened your eyes and said, oh, I can do it this way. Uh, if you guys have anything that I should do with my belt, although I don't wear this much anymore, uh, let me know in the comments. All right, I'd be happy to hear it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything that you learned or that you want to know more information on, again, just hit me up in the comments uh, or direct messages on Instagram, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. So until next time, take care.